For better or worse, landings are what entire flights are measured by. You could have dodged storms, negotiated low passes, and shot a blind approach. But if you misjudge your landing, it can marginalize your whole flight. In the backcountry, this can end up being more than embarrassing, as small missteps can become major ordeals. Unfortunately, there is not a panacea for a well-executed landing. However, by breaking the landing into segments and understanding the task for each segment, you can simplify the rather complex action. I break down the landing into three parts. The flare, touchdown, and rollout. The real goal is to understand that you're trying to manage your momentum to the least distance possible. If you remember back to high school physics, momentum is equal to your mass times velocity. And if you also remember, velocity equals distance over time. Therefore, if your mass stays constant, the smallest possible velocity will yield the shortest distance. The first segment is the flare. If you have executed a steep, stabilized approach described in our previous video, then what you are really doing for the flare is arresting your vertical speed and hopefully arriving at the ground at your least possible forward air speed. This is really about timing and practice. There simply isn't any other substitute. Depending on the aircraft and steepness of the approach, you have two ways to do this. Elevator and pitch, and also engine power. In most planes, it is a combination of the two. The heavier and steeper you are, the more of both will be required. In a light cub with a fixed pitch prop, you might get away with little power and a giant elevator flare. In a mall with a constant speed prop and a steep descent, it isn't uncommon to hit nearly full power very briefly while simultaneously muscling what's left of an already used up elevator to arrest the descent. Unfortunately, there is no catch-all, but it is important to remember the amount of flare has to be equivalent to the amount of vertical speed being dissipated. Too much flare and you will float. Not enough flare and you will hit hard. Hopefully hard enough just to bounce, but you could hit hard enough to do damage. The flip side of this is if you flare too high and too hard, that can result in an even harder landing. If you have done a steep approach followed by a vertical energy arresting flare, you are going to arrive near the ground at nearly a three point attitude. This is true for tail draggers or trikes. I'm not here to discuss the merits of wheel versus tail landings. We use both interchangeably depending on so many factors. But the reality is at the bottom of the flare, regardless of tail wheel or trike, you should be in a nose high or tail low configuration for the least amount of forward energy. And that is ultimately our goal. The flare is typically the most complex part of the arrival and its execution will impact the rest of the landing. The touchdown is the next phase, and it seems pretty simple. But under closer examination, this is where you have the opportunity to really shorten your landing. The goal at touchdown isn't to gently kiss the ground, but rather have a firm, not rough, touchdown. Too rough and you will mechanically bounce, giving up precious braking opportunity. The same is true with gently setting your wheels on the ground while the wing is still working lift. I like to spoil the lift with a snap of forward elevator right at the point of touchdown. Some people also like to reduce flaps to accomplish the same thing. I have found retracting flaps is very distracting for students, though it is very effective when properly used. In any event, the goal at touchdown is to establish firm contact with the ground so you can initiate positive braking as soon as possible. The rollout is the part that will make a lot of tail dragger instructors cringe. On rollout, I like to use as much brakes as possible. In fact, in the mall with 35 inch tires, I land with the brakes almost fully engaged. 
With lighter tailed cubs, I'm cautious not to break too hard or too fast for fear of tipping over. This usually turns most landings into wheelie rollouts. Hard braking with a combination of tail down elevator and possibly a shot of power to keep the tail down can end up in some pretty short rollouts. I like braking to create tail up wheelie rollouts for a few reasons. One, it allows me to brake hard. Two, it allows me to see where I'm going. Three, it allows for a very quick transition to a balk landing in the event of any unseen objects or any other reason to abort. There are certainly times when keeping the three-point attitude is the right thing to do. Rough and soft sand is a good example of wanting to do a tail down rollout. Short rollouts aren't always necessary, but hitting your intended spot followed by the shortest rollout possible is an absolute mandatory skill when operating in the backcountry. Whether landing off airport on a sandbar or a long backcountry strip, carrying excessive energy and having a poorly timed landing can produce unwanted results. A steep stabilized approach followed by a well-timed and energy dissipating flare will result with you having the least amount of momentum at your intended landing spot resulting in a short rollout. This is an essential skill when operating in the backcountry.